Black Myth Wukong just might not be gay enough for the modern day political progressive gaming industry nowadays. That's why the lies and smears against Black Myth Wukong seem to be unending, even coming out of mainstream outlets like Forbes magazine as they paint the game science developers as one of the most evil organizations, at least within the video game sphere, by saying they put out a talking points memo to all reviewers that they have to follow these guidelines or they're not allowed to actually release their their reviews and this is something that had people stirring on the internet talking about what's going on with game science and developers what type of evil organization is this why are they restricting freedom of speech why are they limiting the voices of the people that want to review this game and this led all to an accusation against game science developers of being anti-women anti-freedom of speech anti-games development and anti-creative and of course when you look into the details of the accusations it comes out that these were were all lies especially getting confirmation from people that actually reviewed the game and this is an interesting tidbit that we're seeing right now where the attacks against black myth wukong are increasing and it's leading to a backlash within the audience itself and you don't know what i'm talking about I'm talking about the forbes magazine article that came out recently saying that Black Myth Wukong set a standard of guidelines for all reviewers that receive early review codes for the game where they had to follow the strict standard of not talking about politics and policies within the Chinese government. And this is something a lot of people bought into because we suspected that would be the case for this sort of situation for a game developer that may be tied to the government in some sort of way. We don't know the ties for this game, but we know a lot of companies in China are tied to the government. So people quickly believe this doc that came out saying these strict guidelines to restrict the overall discussion around the game for reviewers as well and this is the the sheet that came out that was purported to be from game science to developers themselves where they were saying this is a notice to all people reviewing the game and their coverage of black myth wukong by saying that using the game key and creating content you acknowledge that you have been informed of the following content and your statements are not related to the marketing team and this is the do's and don'ts that they supposedly listed out for reviewers and this came out and it said enjoy the game obviously that's something they want you to do then it says do not insult other influencers and players do not use offensive language and humor do not include politics violence nudity feminist propaganda fetishization and other content that instigates negative discourse do not use trigger words such as quarantine isolation do not discuss content related to chinese gaming industry policies opinion and news this is the note that was purportedly coming out to all reviewers that were reviewing the game you can see it listed in this note that is talking about people reviewing the game and this was confirmed by paul tassi of forbes someone who's supposed to be credible and of course he didn't get a review code himself but he's just reporting this and i think this is a situation where a lot of people were angry at game science the developers without having any other confirmation because this is what used to happen in old media where people trust these large magazines with historical standards and forbes is one of those journalist magazines that people trusted for some sort of news and confirmation and that wasn't the case with this story and of course many stories in the modern era where you can't trust the journalist the prestigious journalist from a prestigious magazine about the content they're putting out because this story was immediately discredited by the reviewers themselves that received the review code and key they came out and said PSA before you go mental about this review doc at least in the UK included absolutely nothing like this it's pretty standard it's pretty standard to get something like this but the contents in this note are completely fabricated they didn't receive this usually when you get content like this continues on list of in-game content we can't mention no journalist would agree to embargo with any anti-feminism clauses or any other clauses no one would agree to this and they'll probably would talk out about it if that was the case and that wasn't the case when people got the review keys a few weeks ago so this is the kind of fabrication that is being put out right now to damage black myth wukong the game itself because it's a game that is highly wish listed people want to play this game it's number one on steam even its benchmarking demo was ranked in the top 10 of steam this is a game that is getting the success it deserves because it's one of the better games of the year and it's not in line with a lot of the politics that is occurring in the the modern western games industry and of course people are gonna go back to that extortion attempt from sweet baby inc the alleged extortion attempt 
from Sweet Baby Inc. to ask for over $7 million consultancy fees, which Game Science, the developer of Black Myth Wukong, rightly refused. And ever since after refusing this extortion attempt from Sweet Baby Inc., they've been hit by multiple hit pieces from mainstream gaming journalists. You can see this from IGN, Kotaku. Everyone's attacking them on this almost flimsy argument of a mistranslation where it was supposed that they were anti-feminist or they're against policies that are concerning the rights to women when there was just a mistranslation from the author and this was used against the company for multiple months and we can see this continue on with some of the the trash talk that is occurring with the reviews that are coming out for this game of course i'm talking about the screen rant article where their problem with this game was the lack of inclusivity and diversity and this is highlighted by the three out of five star review where they trashed this game in a way where it was incongruent with a lot of the other reviews that were coming out there no one was really talking about diversity and inclusivity in their reviews a lot of the game reviewers that are not attached to these consultancy firms gave it a more critical and balanced review but this one was imbalanced and it caught everyone's attention so much that they looked at the article reviewer the person that actually wrote the article and you can see some backing that they have with multitude of consultancy firms that have this type of logic where they're trying to inject their modern political progressive politics into the gaming sphere and this is the author of that article samar abedin who is a consultant for a firm that is focused on diversity equity and representation in the arts specifically video games and i think this is the thing people are frustrated with she's part of a consultancy firm called splendid where that's their main focus equity diversity and inclusion and of course her main thing about this game is focused on that aspect of the game and i think that's the situation people are ultimately frustrated with when they're talking about some of the reviews for black myth wukong where the over reliance on this topic of inclusion that people want to see in an ancient chinese mythology game about fantastical animals and creatures people don't want to see modern day political progressivism in their ancient mythological chinese game and i think that's the thing that's angering people when it comes to some of these reviews where they're so out of line with what should be the focus of a reviewer that is showing the the bias and perhaps uh, the corruptness that we're seeing within the games journalist industry where they're willing to make up lies about the company tarnish its name the developer and the legacy of the game because they want to see this fail because this game is not in line with their political takes and i think that's what we're understanding with the forbes article where it seems to be taking that stance where it's out there merely to smear and defame black myth wukong because of its success and its non-dependency on these political narratives in the west and i think this is the thing that is scaring these journalists and consultancy firms that this game is having success and they have nothing to do with it and they can't control the message in this game and the only way they can control it is if they attack it and that's why we're getting these weird notes coming up that's why we're getting these discussions the, that are attacking the, the developers themselves demanding inclusivity demanding modern day western politics in an ancient chinese mythological game and when you're hearing pc gamer talking about the regressive views on women based on a lie from an article that was written over six months ago rather than the game itself you quickly realize this is a, a political culture war rather than a review of a new game these people are doing something different with their journalism and their reviews they're trying to hold up their modern day political standards rather than giving the fans what they want which is a clear perspective on a new game that they might actually want to play and this is the problem when reviewers become political activists we can't even trust the reviews anymore and we can't even trust the news on these games anymore because it could be out and out lies and these lies are coming from forbes magazine something that's supposed to be a trusted source of journalism they're printing these lies who can we trust in the video game is market right now when it comes to reviews this is where i say you have to just find one person that you like that does reviews hopefully they're not bought and paid for it and i think that is your best case scenario of getting an honest review you can't trust the meta critic you can't trust the amalgamation of scores anymore because everyone can be lying and everybody is following their own personal 
political perspective nowadays, which now has come to the forefront of any game. And I think that is a frustrating thing as a gamer myself. I don't want to hear your political talking points. I just want to hear, is the gameplay fun? How long is the game? And is the game worth its value? And this is not what we're getting anymore in games journalism. I think Paul Tassi of Forbes is the worst culprit of this, especially if this is seen as completely fabricated because we have online documentation showing that the emails used to send this note are completely different from the game science developers. So the fact that the person at Forbes, a person that's supposed to be respected, couldn't do this simple investigation himself to see if the emails are the same from the, the original game company and the, this new email that has that note, him not even able to do that investigation shows that maybe that was intentional where they're just there to bring out the bad news about this game. And I think that's probably the case. And it's unfortunate that this is the gaming industry today. Lies, politics, and smear campaigns. And that is a sad shame that is the case now where we can't get any more honest reviews. But you tell me what you think about the situation. I like to hear your comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. This is Wagner Knows Why. Catch you next time.